Working out how to write a solid literature review is one of the most common challenges that students face. In this video, we'll decrypt the oftentimes intimidating literature review process and show you how to craft your lit review in three straightforward steps. Let's do it. Hey, my name's Emma, and today we're gonna dissect the almighty literature review. To get the most from this video, be sure to grab a copy of our free literature review template. If you're interested, you can also check out our free Lit Review 101 webinar, where we unpack the lit review process in a bit more detail. You can find the links to both of those in the description. All right, so let's start with the basics by asking the question, what exactly is a literature review? Well, simply put, the literature review chapter or section is where you present and synthesize the existing research, the literature, and lay the theoretical foundation for your study. In other words, it's where you explore the answers that previous researchers have found to your research question, or at least similar research questions. By undertaking a comprehensive literature review, you lay a solid foundation on which you'll build your study. In the world of academic research, you'll almost always be standing on the shoulders of giants. So the literature review chapter is where you explain whose shoulders those are and what those giants have to say. As you can probably tell, the literature review is really important. You can think of it as the core supporting layer in the pyramid of building blocks that will constitute your study. So it's essential that you put in the effort to craft a high quality, comprehensive lit review. The good news is that we'll explain exactly how to do that in this video. All right, now that we've covered what a literature review is and why it's so important, let's look at how to go about putting this meaty chapter together. To do this, we'll break the lit review process into three main steps. These are finding and cataloging the literature, planning and outlining your chapter, and writing up your actual literature review. So let's start with the first step, finding and cataloging the literature. Naturally, there's a lot of existing research out there with more than 5 million new academic articles being published every year. So when it comes to finding literature, the main challenge is likely gonna be filtering out the noise and finding the most relevant articles. How do I do that, you ask? Well, your most likely starting point will be Google Scholar. If you're new to this tool, think of it as the Google for the academic world. You can start by simply entering a few different keywords that are relevant to your research question or questions. Google Scholar will then present a host of articles that you can begin to sift through. What you wanna pay close attention to here is the number of citations for each paper, as this is basically a popularity score. Ideally, what you're looking for are papers that are well-cited and highly relevant to your topic. That said, keep in mind that citations are a cumulative metric, which means that older papers will often have more citations than newer papers just because they've been around longer. In other words, don't fixate on citation count in isolation. Relevance and recency are just as important. Beyond Google Scholar, you'll also definitely want to check out the academic databases and aggregators such as ScienceDirect, PubMed, JSTOR, and so on. These will often overlap with the results you find in Google Scholar, but they can also reveal some hidden gems depending on your field of study. So be sure to check them out. Last but not least, you can consider throwing some AI-powered tools into the mix, provided your university allows this. Naturally, the AI space is moving quickly and the best tools are always changing, but we'll include links to some options below the video. With these tools, all you need to do is enter your research question and they'll dig up a set of articles that they deem relevant. Some will even summarize the key findings in relation to your research, but as always, you'll definitely want to double check any claims they make. Now, it's worth mentioning that there are many other ways to find high quality literature, and there's a lot of nuance involved, but we're just looking at the big picture in this video. If you wanna dig into the details, be sure to check out Literature Review Bootcamp, where we cover the lit review process from A to Z. And to say thanks for watching this video, we've included a 50% discount link in the description. Right, once you've found all the articles that are relevant to your research question, you'll need to start cataloging. What's cataloging, you ask? 
Well, this just means making structured notes about each article, typically in a spreadsheet. This might sound like an unnecessary extra step, but trust me, you're gonna have loads of articles, usually well over 100, and it will be nearly impossible to remember exactly who said what when you reach the writing phase. More importantly though, the process of cataloging forces you to digest and synthesize all of the information and make connections between articles in your own mind. In other words, it's a lot more than just a spreadsheet. To save you some time, we've got a free literature catalog worksheet that you can download and plug your literature into. As always, you can find the link in the description. All right, with your literature digested and cataloged, it's time to move on to step two, planning your chapter. It might sound obvious, but it's critically important to have some sort of rough outline of your literature review chapter in place before you start writing it. So often we see students eagerly rushing into the writing phase only to end up with a disjointed chapter that rambles on in 20 different directions. That is not where you want to be. Now, the secret here is to not get caught up in the weeds. You don't need to be super detailed at this stage. Realistically, all you need is a bullet point list that describes in broad strokes what you'll discuss and where. It's also useful to remember that you're not glued to this outline. In all likelihood, you'll chop and change some sections once you start the writing process, and that's perfectly okay. What's important is that you have some sort of roadmap in place from the start. Okay, so at this stage, you might be wondering, but how should I structure my literature review? Well, there's no one size fits all solution here because the structure of each literature review will vary based on research topic and research questions. That said, it's useful to know that pretty much all literature reviews feature three key ingredients. These ingredients are the theoretical framework, the empirical research, and the research gap. If those terms sound foreign to you, we unpack each of them in our free webinar, Literature Review 101. As always, you can find the link in the description. It's worth pointing out that the theoretical framework empirical research and research gap can themselves provide a basic three-part structure for a literature review, but that's certainly not the only way. In some cases, literature reviews are structured thematically. In some cases, they follow a chronological order, in other words, from the oldest to the newest literature. And in some cases, they can even be organized by methodology. If you're keen to learn more about these structural options, we've got a video that explores exactly that. Link in the description. All right, on to the third and final step. Once you've got a basic outline in place, it's time to get writing. All too often though, students hit a brick wall right about here. So how should you approach this section? Well, there's a lot to be said when it comes to writing up the literature review or any other chapter, but we'll share three practical tips to help you get started. First and foremost, it's essential to approach your writing as an iterative process. In other words, you need to start with a really messy first draft and then polish it over multiple rounds of editing. Don't waste your time trying to write a perfect chapter in one go. All you'll do is run headfirst into a severe writer's block. Instead, take the pressure off yourself by adopting an iterative approach. Secondly, it's important to always lean towards critical writing, also called analytical writing, rather than descriptive writing. What does this mean? Well, at the simplest level, descriptive writing describes the what, while critical writing digs into the so what. So basically the implications of the fact, event, etc. If you're not familiar with these two types of writing, we've got a great explainer video containing loads of examples. The link for that is in the description. Last but not least, you need to get your referencing right. Specifically, you need to provide a credible, correctly formatted reference for any statement you make, which isn't common knowledge. We see students making referencing mistakes all the time, and it costs them dearly. In some cases, they just lose marks, and in others, they face accusations of plagiarism. Trust me, you do not want to be in that situation. So be sure to download a good reference manager and use it frequently. If you don't have one, check out our video about Mendeley, an easy and free reference management tool that you can start using today. All right, we've covered a lot of ground here. So let's do a quick recap. 
the three stages of the literature process are one, sourcing and cataloging high quality articles, two, planning your chapter structure and drawing up an outline, and three, getting down to writing. Of course, this is just a big picture overview and there's a lot more detail and nuance to unpack. So if you're serious about crafting a strong lit review, be sure to check out our literature review bootcamp. Remember, you can get 50% off the standard price by using the link that's in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons and be sure to check out this video next.